Hello, and welcome to Youth Endowment Fund. I'm Caleb Jackson, Head of Change for Youth and Criminal Justice, and I'm here to tell you a bit more about our new theme grant round, Trusted Adults. We want to give you context, insight, and invite you over to our application workshops, which I will share with you later in this video. So who is and what is Youth Endowment Fund? Before we get going on all of that, we like to return back to this main statement here, which our executive director, John Yates, shares a lot about, which is the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And it's important based on varied experiences of different individuals with funders, with researchers, and with frontline practitioners that we talk about the main thing being children. Everything we do is about looking back in the time that we're here to say, as our promise to children, that we did everything that was possible in order to help with their outcomes, especially those that we care about and are concerned about in our mission. We spent time speaking with young people to hear what they had to say about the issues of youth violence. And this is really predicated and summarized here. And when we're talking about trusted adults, one of the reasons why this became of interest to us is really captured well in this third bullet point, which says, which is a 15 year old child saying that they can't think of a single adult that they can trust. So this is our main thing. Children are our main thing. So we are the Youth Endowment Fund. We are here to find out what works and build a movement to put this knowledge into practice. This is our mission. And I'll talk to you a bit more about how we're good, we are likely to go about that and what the strategy and plan is to do that so that whoever you are, wherever you've come from, you understand our reason for the way we approach some of the things that we do, the way we fund, the way we evaluate, which all are stemming towards fulfilling this mission. Here is our strategy on the page. This is the way we envisage that we'll live out our mission here at Youth Endowment Fund. And on the left hand side, you'll see that we have prioritizing focus areas. This is where we will spend most of our time, resources and efforts to build up evidence and test robustly programs and interventions that would speak to these areas. And these have been shared with us through engagement with a number of external partners, a multitude of voices to make sure that what we produce is going to be usable and user friendly and available and accessible to those who may have to make choices or are responsible for children's lives. So we're gonna fund good work. That's the toolbox. That's what it is. That's where this all starts. And funding good works includes looking at a themed round like trusted adults. And the whole purpose is, can we use research to build up a foundation so that we can test the programs that best speak to the theme we're focusing on or one of our priority areas? That is underpinned by world leading research that will lead to world leading research that includes data analysis and much more and even understanding or investigating the wider causes of youth violence, inequalities, poverty, racial discrimination. We have understanding the lives of young people, and it's really important for us to have the qualitative nature of young people's voice. Youth voice is important to us. It's inherently important to us because without it, how can we possibly make change happen? So we have our Youth Advisory Board and we have a Peer Action Collective. Peer Action Collective is a national program. You can find that more on the website. And the Youth Advisory Board serves our organisation as we serve them, of which two of them sit on our Youth, Advice, Youth Endowment Fund Committee. We'll find what works. That means that we'll produce evaluation reports of things that we funded. We fund programmes in order to find if they work. And because we're trying to build a case for change, by building robust evaluation, that allows us to have the best chance of change. So our rigorous application process, our rigorous evaluation process, it's all because we want to be able to say something quite concrete and quite strongly for why change should happen and onboard people because they believe in the evidence. 
we're going to produce guidance reports, which is putting in the hands of practitioners and frontline leaders, frontline practitioners and service leaders, the best ways to go about what they do. And these guidance reports will have will be tiered on each of the focus areas and will be accessible, which means that thousands of people having to work with children can look at the best practices and be evidence led in their approach. That's part of our promise as Youth Endowment Fund. And lastly, we have the toolkit, the YEF toolkit. If you haven't checked it out, go on our website. It's the What Works or the Which Guide to Youth Violence. And the summary is that you will see a number of approaches, which is currently 17. It will go to 19 by the end of the year. That will give you an overview as to different types of approaches and the evidence that sits behind that. And that's the best available evidence here and now. The hard work's been done, which means it's accessible for everybody who might have an interest or responsibility around this agenda. All of that said, the whole purpose to fulfill our mission is to build a network who's gonna use what we find to work. And that's where we work for change. We're gonna connect people with the evidence, those who are in the service leaders, those who are frontline practitioners, those who are doing the doing on a daily basis. We're gonna create coalitions. And in the coalitions, we're gonna to help to implement a change or two that they'll help us select based on their intelligence, their insight, so that we can scale up the change in that respect and get the change out there. And lastly, we'll build support for change, which is through policy makers, speaking with media, influencers, providing them with what they need to change the narrative or certainly have an evidence-based or evidence-led approach to reporting or decision-making. And we wanna be the gold, to, the gold standard for so responding to youth violence. So this, our strategy at Youth and Number Fund, it's not possible without having key partners from the youth sector, education, police, local authority, without the support from many others who aren't on this four icon box, we couldn't do what we do. And so it's important to share with you why we do what we do, because our application process our evaluation process all leads to how can this lead to change for children, which is our promise, going back to keeping the main thing, the main thing. So why are you, have you tuned in today? Well, you've seen a video and you wanna hear more about what Trusted Adults is about. And we're gonna share with you the, the our thinking, where we came from to get to the things that are in and out how we joined up the dots to produce a scope so that we know what we might fund in this round and tell you a bit more about joining our workshops. The, the main thing is that we connect with key stakeholders who may be able to deliver on some of the programs we're interested in so that we can learn and we can share the learning in due course. So as a kickoff, at the application workshop, you hear more about the scope of the Trusted Adult Grant Run. That means what's in, what are we considering to fund and what won't we fund. You have valuable resources and part of this video is to ensure that you're alert to what we might be looking for. There are programs and interventions that will be in and there will be programs and interventions that will be out. And we have to be clear on that because of the level of interest that we build in each of our themed rounds or any of our grant rounds in that respect. We'll, tell, we'll share more about what the evidence says. We've done a deep programmatic dive across here in the US of what trusted adult evidence is out there. So you'll hear about that. And we'll give you more depths of information about how to make a strong application so that you have the best chance of becoming, going through the application process into the shortlist. And the whole purpose of the workshop is to work out whether you're really eligible, because again, we want to save your resources. You're doing brilliant things where you are, and what we wouldn't want to do is waste your time. We want everybody that is in to have the best chance of being in. Of course, we'll have to say no to some, but such is the nature of funding. It's the toughest part of the job with so many brilliant organizations doing brilliant things out there. 
it will be in a webinar format and there will be lots of time for Q&A, which we think is really important. So you go away with the best idea as to what we're looking for. So trusted adults, let's talk about the background to the theme. So young people told us that there are kind of eight things they need to thrive within our society. And they said they need a supportive home. So you would have seen that a grant round recently in what we call grant round two, which is a, a supportive home, has come and gone. They talked about a safe neighbourhood. They talked about another chance. That's diversion from the criminal justice system. So we did that as one of our very premier launches. And then we've got adults they can trust. Adults they trust is what they need. So we've termed it trusted adults. So we know that children have told us that this is something they need. That where they have adults they trust, they thrive. Where they don't have adults they trust, they decline. Why have we chosen trusted adults as a thing? Well, we spoke with many stakeholders who shared that focusing on this area could benefit children long term. And not only that, the types of children that will be focused in this round just simply don't get enough support. And certainly from my own short walk and experience of working within youth work, the types of children which are in the tertiary bracket often don't get the level of support that's needed because of their complex nature and challenge to work with them. And so this is going to help us understand what really worked for them and where are the possibilities to scale up programs. And lastly, the evidence base to trusted adults is quite limited, even when it's popular in terms of practice. So there's a real opportunity for us to build the evidence base to support and help partners who are day in, day out, passionate, brilliant at working with these types of children and maybe are misunderstood because they don't have the evidence to back them. So that's one of the things that has pushed us to think about trusted adults as a theme. It felt right. It felt as the right place in terms of the things we've got to focus on in that respect. So what did young people say to us? Because we worked alongside the Youth Advisory Board to get some insight and just capture their voice. So they said about trusted adults that having the right trusted adult relationship in a young person's life can be, play a critical role as a, as a whole. Developing a trusted relationship with an adult that has lived experience or is representative of young people or of the young person can be important. But equally, some of the best relationships can come from unexpected matches. So that's about actually get me a, someone who isn't like me, because that could be really positive for me. Young people have some agency to choose the adult they work with. That's quite important. It's key to building a positive relationship if they've had handle in choosing the adult they work with. And adults need to be genuine. They need to want to help the young people. They've got to be there for the right reasons. Otherwise, young people pick up on the disingenuous relationship that they might have. And so this is what some of the young people told us from our Youth Advisory Board. And we're very grateful to have them guide us through some of our thinking. So key messages from other stakeholders who told us, look, trusted adults is a key component. You know, they, 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 we need to recognise the skill competencies and effective practice of a trusted adult worker, which is generally misunderstood. Uh, another stakeholder told us that trusted adults often don't have power within statutory formal proceedings. So therefore, being outside of statutory formal proceedings gives you more power because children get to vote with their feet in that respect. So they're there because they want to be there rather than they've been forced there through a an agreement or a referral order, should we say. And you know what? Key stakeholders were telling us that large studies are needed to convince commissioners about the difference it can make. If there isn't anybody putting together this piece of evidence, how would the narrative around working with these types of children ever change. And lastly, from the youth sector, the cuts are meaning that young people have less to do, which means they're coming across less trusted adults. So these are some 
really pivotal key messages that colleagues from different stakeholder bodies and leads and practices shared with us to inform and help our thinking around this theme. So some key clarifications before the application workshop. We're, we're really interested in children with the tertiary levels of need, and we'll, we'll share more about that in the application workshop. But just a heads up that we fund a number of programs which are already speaking to children at risk rather than at tertiary levels. So we've got enough, for example, mentoring programs which are at the at risk level rather than at the tertiary level. We really want to know what happens with children at the tertiary levels of need because they are often exposed to the most significant levels of harm, uh, usually higher than others. And so what works well when they're well ingrained and integrated within prolific harms, what happens and what could work for them? And we aren't sure what actually works for those young people describing this way, so we're keen to find out. What does it mean in practice? So we're looking at children who are affiliated with groups, often referred to as in gangs, often involved in crime, often involved in violence or being a recipient of violence, often trafficked, and that includes child criminal exploitation. And it's important to note that they're aged 11 to 18 is the main focus of this round. But again, when you come to the application workshop, we'll share more about that. So here's the question we're aiming to answer. Do approaches that focus on building positive and trusted relationships with an adult outside of the family environment lead to improved outcomes for children and young people? Primarily aged 10 to 18 with the greatest unmet, unmet needs that put them at high risk of being affected by violence, offending and or exploitation. So this is the research question that we're hoping to understand and answer in this round. Here's our definition of a trusted adult. A trusted adult is not a family member or friend, but is someone who has the knowledge, skills, and abilities to build trusted relationships and deliver specific approaches that support positive outcomes for a young person. Clear roles, responsibilities, and boundaries are established between a trusted adult and a young person. Thanks so much for listening. And all that's left to share with you now is when are the application workshops happening, I hear you say. So Tuesday the 4th of October, 2 to 3 p.m. is our kickoff session. Monday the 17th of October, 3 to 4 p.m. And Monday the 31st of October, 3 to 4 p.m. At the application workshop, you'll hear more about what's included in the theme grant round, Trusted Adults. You'll hear more about what types of children we're interested in this round or programs working with. You'll hear more about what types of interventions and programs should be included in this round. And we'll tell you and share with you our insights to evaluation and how you might partner with us on that and what we need from you to be able to have a successful dream team in that respect. Lastly, if you are looking to join any of the application workshops, please go on our website. When the application form is released, it will share the link. You just click that, uh, give your details in the form, and then it will get you'll get notifications to be able to join our application workshop. They're really useful to iron out whether you're eligible, really useful to help you understand what you need to prepare in order to be successful or to have a strong application going forward. Hope this has been beneficial. It's a quick whistle stop tour as to the theme grant round, Trusted Adults, and we hope to see you at one of our workshops if it's appropriate and if you're eligible. Otherwise, do check out everything else we have over at our website. Check out our toolkit, really useful, great place to access available evidence, depending on what you're doing, and that will continue to build. And also subscribe or click our join button for email newsletters.
which will be really useful to hearing the latest developments around Youth Endowment Fund's work. I'm Caleb, we're Youth Endowment Fund. Have a great day.